Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Brave Kids Art Club. My name is Brad and I am so excited to draw today. Are you excited to draw? Awesome, okay good. I was hoping you were here ready to draw because I am always ready to draw. And today we have a really fun animal, so I'm glad you guys showed up. Let me give you a few hints to see if you can figure out which animal we're drawing today. It mainly lives in the desert. If it feels threatened, it might spit at you. And it has humps on its back. Yeah, that one gave it away, didn't it? <laughs> you got it, we are drawing a camel today. And camels are such amazing creatures, so we're gonna learn a lot of fun facts about them, we're gonna learn how to draw one, but before we do that, let's make sure we have everything we need to get started. Make sure that you have a nice clean sheet of paper. You're gonna need a pencil, because we're gonna do a lot of sketching, uh, preferably sharpened. <laughs> and then uh, after we do our sketch, we're gonna do an outline, a final outline with a dark marker or a pen, so have one of those handy. And then we're gonna do a lot of erasing of the under sketch and things like that. So have an eraser handy. I think I'm over prepared and have multiple erasers. And then at the very end, we're gonna do some coloring, which is my most favorite part. So it doesn't matter if you have markers or crayons or colored pencils or watercolors, whatever you wanna use is just fine. But all right, let's jump into our sketch of our camel. Now, I have my sketch pad on its side horizontal because I wanna have my camel walking. And camels are kind of a funky shape. They're really big animals. They're about six feet tall from their shoulders, uh, which is really, really tall. And that is not including how high up their head is. So you can imagine how big these animals are. But uh, we're gonna to have to try to fit their body in here. So we need to leave a lot of room for that neck and a lot of room for those legs. And I guess for the hump too. All right, so let's start with an oval shape. We're gonna do an oval right about here in the, kind of to the left. A little oval shape like this. Like a sideways egg. All right, so we got the body. We're gonna leave room for the hump on the top. Now I'm gonna do a single hump camel. So there's two types of camels. The ones that live in like Africa, those ones in the Middle East, those have one hump. There's ones that have two humps, that's the other kind of camel, and they live in Central Asia. So we're gonna do an African or a Middle Eastern camel and it's going to be one humped right here. If you wanna draw two, go ahead and draw two. Let's make sure we have room for the neck because we're gonna want it, the head and the neck are pretty important. So we're gonna just do a little thing like this. We're just gonna go off here and just do a little U shape. U, like that. And we're gonna do it again just right underneath it. And we'll have it kind of come up right about here. So it almost looks like we're drawing a teapot, doesn't it? <laughs> little teapot over here. <laughs> okay, I gotta stop playing around. It's not a teapot, we're drawing a camel, but maybe that'll be your inspiration for the shape. Now we just need to draw the head of our camel. They kind of have a head of hair, so let's do the kind of the little head of hair right here, and it could be kind of squiggly if you want. <laughs> maybe they have some curly hair. It's not important right this second. But right over here is where we're gonna do the shape of the face, so pay close attention. It kinda goes like this. It goes down, and it goes back up a little bit, and then it drops. You see that? So it kinda goes out a little bit. It almost looks like when we drew our dragon, it kinda looks like that face, just a little bit. But then you gotta draw the big lips. They got big, thick lips because that makes it so that they can eat almost any type of plant even if it has thorns on it. There's the little like prickly things on it that normally keep most animals away from those types of plants, but they can eat them. There you go, we'll draw the little bottom of the lips. So I have them smiling right there. And then we'll just do a little, little draw line right here. So just draw a little C shape and have that come up to over here. They kind of have a giraffe looking face. Now that I'm looking at it, it's kind of similar to the giraffe we drew. Kind of a interesting face. They got the, yeah, they got those big thick lips though, and I feel like giraffes do too. Hmm, I'm gonna have to look that up. Giraffe lips. It seems like a weird thing to look up. <laughs> okay, so we got that. If you've ever seen inside their mouths, they got big old nasty teeth. Whew. I've seen their mouth open and it's kind of terrifying. Let's do this. Let's put some big, eye, big eyes on this guy just because I want them to be a real big friendly camel. There you go, looking back at us. People have been using camels for thousands of years. They kind of called them the ship of the desert because they could carry up to like 600 pounds on their back. 
So imagine they can carry people, they can carry your cargo, all your extra stuff you need to bring around through the desert. They were the perfect way to travel through a desert. I mean, they still are. You'll see this big, long, tall leg back here. It's going to do like a little backwards S. This, and then it's going to go down. It's going to kind of go forward like that. There's going to be long legs, so we're going to have that go all the way down to the bottom. But yeah, that hump just stores fat. So just like our beaver, the beaver tail, they're able to access that when their bodies need fat or need something to eat. When they're starving, they don't have access to actual food. They can have that and their body will allow them to, to take from that, which is really neat. It's like they have an emergency supply of food at all times on their body. So you can imagine how that'd be really helpful in a desert. All right, you see what I'm doing here? It's like an S shape for their back. They have long, skinny legs. And then we'll do the, kind of taper it down here. There we go, long, skinny leg. I've decided to name him Clarence. That's why I keep saying him. C Clarence the camel. I like that name. So we got old Clarence here. He's been through the desert a few times. He knows his way around. All right, so right about here, Let's draw this front leg and then we'll continue on with the back. So we want to draw the legs in the front first and then we'll draw the ones in the back. So this guy's walking and they can walk for a long ways in a desert without needing much water. When they do drink water, they come upon water, they can drink up to 30 gallons in about 13 minutes. It's kind of a weirdly specific number, but 13 minutes, that's super quick to drink 30 gallons. They can hydrate better than any animal. It allows them to go such long distances in the desert. All right, so now we gotta do that line right there. That line, I kinda missed that one. It was going a little bit too far forward. So once we get about here, which is similar height to this back leg, we're gonna do a circle right here. We did these before, I think we did these on the giraffe actually. And then we're gonna do a line, that'll be their kneecap. And we'll do a line going from here to here, like that, kind of a skinnier, stickish leg. And we'll worry about the feet in a second. <laughs> I'm getting there. There we go. But what we're gonna do is once you've drawn them on there, now you can just erase the middle. You don't need that middle. You don't wanna go over that with this. All right, so now we gotta do those back legs. They can run fast too really fast up to like 25 miles an hour just like consistently they can run for a long time at that speed which is really impressive and if they really need to get in a hurry they can get up to 40 miles per hour that is pretty darn fast for this kind of animal it just doesn't look like it'll be able to run that fast it looks kind of goofy all right so now we got to do the same thing we did right here we just moved it back a little bit like that bring it in there we go. This leg looks like it's getting too long. There we go. We'll move that back. And then again, we'll, move, we'll erase the middle kneecap right there. All right. Clarence has almost finished that back leg. I like doing these four-legged animals. It's giving me lots of practice. I don't think I've drawn this many types of four-legged animals <laughs> in my entire life. I've drawn so many, so many. I do these every single day. It's really helping me out learn how to draw these back legs which is cool. That shows that practice does make perfect. Practice does help. And you do get better and better. Try doing something for even 30 days. I've done lots of 30 day art challenges. So that's one month. I occasionally have to go through and erase all these little things in the middle so I don't get messed up. But that's one month of drawing maybe a certain thing. Like I had to draw people for one month, one a day. And I got a lot better at drawing people because of that. So practice, practice, practice. All right, I think we're missing a few things. What are we missing? Yep, you're right. Got to get those feet. We got to get the feet and the tail. We're almost missing. Yeah, I forgot we're missing the tail. All right, let's do those feet. They kind of got goofy feet. They got skinny legs and big feet. Kind of stick them out like that. Why do you think they have big feet? They're in the desert. They're walking on what? Sand. They're walking on a lot of sand. So if they have a bigger footprint, it's easier to walk on a loose surface. That's why snowshoes exist. So that when you're walking on snowshoe and walking on snow, you wear those snowshoes so your feet don't sink right into the 
right into the snow. All right, so we'll just do a little feet like this and then put a little line on there. There we go, we got those feet in there. Maybe you wanna give them like a really cool saddle or you wanna give them like a blanket that they put on top of here, really colorful ones from like the Middle East or Africa. I've seen some really cool ones. Okay, so now we gotta, oh, add the little tail and we should be really close. It's just gonna be like this little, it's kinda like a horse tail, just a smaller one. Just kinda long hair, just kinda whips out back there. Maybe we'll give them some more like, like I said, we'll give them kind of a poofier haircut there. And sometimes they'll have like extra fur. We'll kind of make this poofy too. Just do a little like lumpiness. There we go. And then we just want to make it kind of feel, they got little clumps of fur or hair on these parts, just more so. Kind of like our, when we drew a bison, we had like chunks of hair that were thicker than other chunks. They kind of have that going on. So I'm going to give Clarence a few little little areas of, of hair <laughs> on his body. If you need to do anything else, make sure you stop and make those changes. And then uh, we're ready to do our final line with our marker. Start with the back end. Do those legs. Do the big old leg right there. Now what else about the camel makes them good for going in the desert. Hmm, their eyes. So they have very long eyelashes, a lot like our llama. That was one of our first drawings in this show. We learned about llama's eyelashes protecting their eyes. And that's what, uh, that's what the, uh, the eyelashes on our camel do too. They protect their eyes, but they also have another eyelid. I know I keep referring to other animals, but so many animals have things in common. It's really cool to see after drawing all these animals to find out which ones have so much in common. Like, like, did you know that camels have similar eyes to an alligator? They have an extra eyelid. So that they have like, instead of just having your normal eyelid that closes your eyes, they have an extra one that's clear so they can see through it. And it protects their eyes from like sand and things, their actual eye. Isn't that amazing? So if there's a big sandstorm or things like that, they can just have that eyelid cut closed and they can still see. That would be a really amazing thing to have as a human. <laughs> Same as their nose. And I'm pretty sure that's what a beaver does. Beaver can close off their nose. Is it a beaver? Yeah, it is a beaver. They can close off their nose so nothing gets in, no water gets in. Camels can do that with their with their nostrils too. Although I don't think they do a lot of swimming. I don't think I've ever seen a camel swim. I'm not saying they don't. I'm just saying I've never seen a camel swim. <laughs> I have no clue. You know what? I'm going to bring this all the way up, right up to here. And then I'm going to do the, the lumps right here. Just to make it look like extra hairy right there on that. The hump of the back right there. Do a bunch of those. Like a little cloud on their back. Yeah, this really reminds me of drawing the bison, which was a whole lot of fun. If you haven't checked out that video, you should go check it out. That was a really fun one to draw. Yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying these, these episodes. I've been having a lot of fun drawing animals. At some point, I'll draw things other than animals. I'll keep drawing animals, but I'll also draw other things. I just have to, uh, I feel like I haven't done all the animals that I've wanted to do yet. So this has been a lot of fun. Hopefully doing animals is something that you guys enjoy as well. Make sure you tell me if you have any animals that you want me to draw. I'll add them to the list. A lot of you have been requesting them and I've been putting them on the list and checking them off every single week. So I'll, I will definitely get to your animal if you mention it. Just have your parents just go email us directly or they can, uh, they can just direct message us at uh, Brave Kids Art Club on Instagram. All right, let's do that tail in the back. Now, if you want to do it a different color than black, go ahead and, and wait on doing the tail. I think my, my tail will just be black. I'm okay with that. And then let's do the, let's do the face. I can't really, there we go. There we go. 
do that lip and make him make Clarence all smiley because he's a friendly camel. I don't even know. I'm like, oh, I'm just now noticing it. We didn't do his ear. We didn't do his little ear. We'll kind of do it like this. Like that. <laughs> I forgot. Clarence has to have an ear. So I kind of have it pointed off like that. Like a half of a leaf. And then we'll do that little shape right there. And then the nose. It's kind of just like a little line. Because they can shut those right off, like I said. Let's do the eye. Okay, we'll do the pupil. A nice big pupil to make sure that everybody knows how friendly Clarence the camel is. Oh my goodness, I think I'm done. I think I'm ready to color, which is my favorite part. Are you happy with how yours is turning out? Good. Well, if you also need more time, you can go ahead and and take the, all the time you need. Just push pause and, and uh, get it to a point where you're happy with it and then you can get coloring it. But make sure you're happy with this before you start coloring. Now I'm gonna go and just erase all the under sketch and then I'm gonna get coloring and we'll just catch up right after. How's that sound? Awesome, okay, let's do that. is finished oh man I think it's funny but what I'm most proud of is his hair <laughs> I love his hair that is so fun and because I'm so proud of what I made I need to sign my name on my artwork I need to own my work there we go now everybody knows that this was my drawing and I was really proud of it hopefully you're proud of what you made too you should be because you made it and that's amazing so Thank you guys so much for drawing with me today. I love doing this. We do it Monday through Friday, every single day. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed doing this, please give this video a like. And uh, yeah, and just keep recommending animals for me and we'll keep adding them to the list. It's always so much fun to, to find out uh, which animals you guys would like to draw. I wanna draw what you guys want to draw. But uh, before I let you go, remember, be brave, be creative, but most importantly, be you. Alrighty, we'll see you guys next time.